Any Affair 2, Chapter 12, The Bet. The day before the Industry Product Expo in Monte Carlo. You follow Sophia into the Hotel Convention Center and find it a hive of activity. Across the room, the teams from the Manufacturing and Robotics Divisions are hard at work. What are you doing that doesn't go there? Keep it up, everyone. We're making good progress. Sam's prototype. It's actually pretty impressive. Well, looks like it's going to be close quarters this morning. Forget them. I need you to focus. We don't have much time to finalize the details before we meet Anton Bassett this afternoon. And I don't need to remind you how important it is for our division to impress an investor with pockets as deep as Anton's. Sophia shows you to the booth area. Everything you need to should be here, but make a list for the tech guys if something comes up short. I have to make sure our prototyping machine will still arrive at noon. Before you can respond, she clips away with, uh, without a backward glance. So much for teamwork. I guess I'd better get started. You dive right into the work. You have a last week's presentation as a foundation, so you just have to fine-tune the rest. When I'm talking to the investors tomorrow, I should highlight the project's potential uses. Kind of a given. You make sure to put the information about medical machines at the top, then list the other applicants or applications for the plastic alternative underneath. Investors will want to see this isn't a one-trick pony. By the time Sophia returns, you feel good about your progress. <coughs> well, are you ready? Sophia, I could recite the entire presentation right now if you want. I'm good. No, I think we're going to do it just to annoy the crap out of you. She examines the booth from top to bottom, then nods. Very well. You can take a break since there's nothing else to do until the machine arrives. I'll meet you at the lobby at one o'clock sharp. You don't need to be told twice. You pack up your things and head towards the exit. When you're walking past Robin's booth, when you hear a loud crash. Be careful with that, I swear. If one more thing goes wrong today, I'm gonna... She catches sight of you and cuts off. Can I help you? You glance over her shoulder to where the manufacturing booth is in complete disarray. Do you, um, want my advice? Ah, uh -huh. and what exactly makes you think you know more about my project than I do? You think back to the conversation you had with Teresa and Julian if Robin's putting the entire company at risk because of her shortcuts, maybe you should step in. Just remember what's really important here, Robin. It's not all about the money. Wow, you seriously are naive, aren't you? No matter, no wonder Sam went for you. Fine, be that way. Good luck tomorrow. It looks like you're gonna need it. Oof. Your mind is still on the confrontation with Robin as you make your way through the lobby to the elevators and you almost crash right into Sam, because we seem prone to do that. Whoa there. Okay, are you okay? Whoops, sorry. I was just distracted. Uh-oh. You want to talk about it? It's... It's nothing I can't handle. Do you need me to kick her ass? It's fine. I wish I could have just shake her off, but uh, we used to be friends. Yeah, I know. We'll get used to the new normal eventually. She sacks her head as if to clear it. The elevator rises with a ding and she gestures for you to get on first. As soon as the door is shut, you take advantage of being alone with Sam. Yeah, I'm not going to push her against the wall. I'm, I'm still kind of seething. I hope you're ready to lose tomorrow, you know. I've put in a lot of hours to beat the robotics department. Uh, do we have a love-hate relationship now? Something like that. I've always liked the enemies to lovers trope. I think you have that backward. Mm, maybe that was all part of my plan. Maybe I was getting you to lower your guard. And now that my guard is down, what will you do to me? 
You drop your hands to Sam's ass and draw her hips flush against yours. She responds by a blazing trail of kisses up your neck and then across your jawline to your ear. Mm, I like where this is going. And then you'll like it even more when I take the robotics division down tomorrow. She chuckles, still keeping her body pressed to yours. So, that's how you want to play this? Mm, depends if you're up for the challenge. Consider it a bet. If my division gets the win tomorrow, you can get on your knees and do exactly what I tell you to do. Mm, and when the environmental lab wins, you'll be on your knees. Her eyes darken at the suggestion. I can't think of a better way to go. You're only saying that because you have no idea how hard I plan to make you beg. Your breath hitches as Sam seals the deal with a kiss. Just a light press of her lips on yours, it's the warm rasp of her breath promises much more to come. Finally, the elevator arrives at Sam's floor. She smiles at you as she steps out into the hall. I'd invite you to practice your groveling, but... I've got an investment meeting over lunch and an appointment with two twins in a few minutes. Lucky you. What kind of appointment? We've got a video chat scheduled to play Dominion Royale together. You recognize the name of the twins' favorite online video game. They destroy me every time, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. Well, that sounds fun. Besides, it'd be good for you to practice losing before the expo. Ooh, God. Oh, yeah. Well, why don't you join us? The boys would love to see you. And then we can both get in some practice. Play a virtual game with the twins. Why not? You're on. Sam leads you to her room. Damn, this is uh, quite the view. Must be nice to be the boss. It has its perks. She drops a quick kiss on your lips before setting up the video call after a few rings. Mason and Mickey pick up on the screen. Hi, Mom. I is that Hannah with you? Is she gonna play Dominion Royale with us? Of course. Uh, and I hope you're ready to go down. My fingers are flexed and ready. You wiggle your fingers at them and they laugh. Sam starts to set up the game. Are you uh, two keeping Jordan on her toes? Jordan waves in front of the frame, waving at you both. Shouldn't you be asking if they're behaving? Uh, well, we've been good, promise. They tried to order 12 pizzas last night. Uh, Mickey wanted to order 12, we cut back and swapped out my shampoo for syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I hypothesized it would give your hair a lustrous glow. I, I said it'd just be sticky. You know, once you run that experiment on one nanny, you uh, really don't have to do it again. Don't worry, everyone here is doing A-OK -okay now. Jordan gives you and Sam a little salute. I'm gonna get breakfast started for these two. Enjoy your chat. Uh, no sooner has Jordan disappeared from the screen uh, and then the game finally loads. Sam boots up Dominion Royale and gets a backdrop of a mythical kingdom. You start by choosing your character. The evil sorceress, the royal archer. Why not? I love sniping. I'll just uh, find somewhere high and pick you off one by one. Nah, because my mighty minotaur will smash all the towers. And my clever uh, rogue is too fast. You won't be able to hit her. I'm not sure your arrows can penetrate the armor of the Silver Knight. Get ready! So basically what you're telling me is I should have been an evil sorceress. Fine. I just went against my mantra. <sighs> the round starts and you're loaded on a map that starts inside a magical medieval castle. Go! Wait, how do you run? It, it, it's the right stick. And then the A to sprint. And you better use it, because here I come. Mickey's giant mythical beast smashes his hammer down towards you. Arr! Duck, die. Yes, die should definitely be the option. At the last possible second, you manage to dodge out of the way. Aha! Uh -huh. Nice one, Anna. I'm not done with you yet. Alright, boys. I'll give Anna a chance to... 
catch our breath. Okay, we've never played before. Hey, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Wait, why is it three on one? Oops, nope. I just died. Just try to collect as many upgrades as you can, like health potion. Mason's rogue tosses you a bottle and you can just manage to catch it. Thanks. The four of you explore the castle while collecting potions and upgrades. After a few minutes of jumping, running, and punching air, you start to get the feel of the controls. I think I've got the hang of it. Prepare to taste my arrows. You follow the others outside the castle gates just to see the boys turn and face off against you and Sam. Sorry, Anna, but if you're uh, ready to fight now, then we can let you go a step further. Sam looks at you. You up for this? Mm, bring it on. The boys rush at you head first. Who do you fight? The mini Minotaur is the most threatening. You step forward into the Minotaur's path. Grrr! I can take him down if I pinpoint his weakness, which would be his legs. You dodge another swing of his hammer, then aim for his knees. Take that. The Minotaur crumples to the ground and you're able to take advantage, pointing another arrow at him. I surrender! I surrender! When did you two get so good at this? You look over and see Sam has a mason at the end of her sword. Never underestimate the power of beginner's luck. That means Mom and Anna have to fight now. What? Wait, it does? I mean, it, it does. Don't worry, Anna. You can take her. What? Why, why is this like a free-for-all? This is not supposed to be a battle royale. They square off against the Silver Knight. Wait and parry. You stay poised and ready, but let Sam make the first move. On guard. You quickly parry, then redirect your momentum into a counterattack. Not so fast. The two of you are surprisingly evenly matched. Go, oh, Mom! Go, oh, Anna! I better do something extra if I want to get the upper hand. I should... Button mash. Button mash never works, let me be real. I don't know how many people I've defeated. Distractor Ira. Back in the real world, out of the view of the video chat, you slide your hand up like Sam's leg. All's fair in love and, and Dominion Royale. Anna, what are you doing? Just making things a little more exciting. Your fingers dance even higher, making it very hard for her to concentrate. And back in the game, your avatar has managed to disarm the Silver Knight, pressing her own sword to her throat. What the? Ah, uh, victory is mine. That was awesome! Anna, you have to show us how you did that. No, I don't. No, I don't. Uh, I'm pretty sure I uh, just got lucky. The four of you play a few more rounds of the game before Sam takes you back to the loading screen. Oh, that's all the murder and mayhem we have time for, you two. Anna and I need to get back to work. That's okay, we were just gonna go pumpkin picking soon anyway. Steffi and Javi are meeting us here. Hmm, sounds like even more fun than Dominion Royale. Yeah, pumpkin picking's fine. She shuts down the video game, replacing the game interface with the twins' real life faces. Be good and pick out the biggest pumpkin you can find for me. You two can help me carve it when I get back. We will. Love you, bye. The twins sign off, chatting happily with one another as they go. Thanks for joining me. I know they had more fun than uh, if they had just played with the stuffy old mom. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I didn't realize how much I missed them until I saw their faces. She scoots closer and wraps her arm around your shoulders and you lean into her brace, indulging for a moment, and then pull back. I hate to, to Dominion and run, but Sophia will kill me if I'm not ready on time. You still need to get into that investment meeting. Sam leans in to kiss you, her lips lingering against yours as she whispers, Don't remind me. How am I supposed to concentrate on financial forecasts when I can still taste you? Mm, you can't. It's all part of my master plan to throw you off your game and win this little bet of ours. She laughs as she helps you to your feet and walks you to the door. One thing's for sure, if I do lose, it'd be the most fun I ever had doing it. Yeah, okay. I don't know if I would ever lose against a girl for purpose. <clears throat> Cough. 
A few hours later, you and Sophia join the rest of Dalton Russo executives at Circuit de Monaco Racecourse. It's really empty around here. Aren't there supposed to be stands and stuff for spectators? The course isn't officially open this time of year. It's off-season. But Anton Bissett is a huge racing fan, so any time he's in a city with a track, he pulls some strings so he can get private access, even if it means closing down regular streets. Wow, the rich. Poor babies. Damn, if I had that kind of money, I'd, uh... Pull strings with the Oceanic Museum of Monaco. Think of all the cool behind-the-scenes science you could learn. No thanks. Oh, shut up. Just then, the squeal of tires on asphalt interrupts you. you. Smell the burning rubber a few seconds later before the sleek, yellow sports car comes screeching into view. The Dalton Russo executives crowd around the car as if it slides to a halt. The doors fling open, and an older man in a perfectly tailored suit steps out. Hello, everyone. Mr. Bissett, pleasure to meet you again. Yes, it's an honor, and this car you bought at an auction last year? I thought I recognized it. What are uh, your thoughts on the best gear ratio for this model? The others close in to talk shop or shake hands on sand. Uh, only Sophia holds herself back. With uh, all her talk of making an impression, you'd think she'd be the first to greet him. She must have a plan. Yes. She actually is already doing her plan. It drives rich people like this crazy when they don't get attention from everybody in the room. I should... Ask her what her game is. Are we not gonna say hi, or...? Always so eager. We want Anton to come to us. There you go. But everyone else is a fool if they think that fawning over him will win them points. I know powerful men. I've been surrounded by them my whole entire life. Trust me on this, Anna. And she is correct. You nod and hang back with her if anyone knows how to get people to do what uh, she wants. It's Sophia. Anton Bissett is obviously a man who's used to being the center of attention. With a laugh, he holds up his hands and addresses the group. I'm glad you could all join me here. Cars and racing are my two greatest passions. Next to making money, of course. Ah, uh, but of course. Which is why I wanted to meet here before the expo. There's no better way to get a feel for the road or for people driving the future of innovation. The non-Anton starts uh, moving towards a line of cars that have been parked off to the one side, starting with the one he rode in on. His greatest passion. Looks completely different than the one on the screen. Pixelberry couldn't even get that right. It has an impressive chassis. And torsion springs? Most of the group joins in, but when you don't say anything, Anton's gaze falls on you. He quirks an eyebrow expectingly. And you, what do you think of the car? You consider what Sophia told you earlier about not fawning over Anton. I think, um, it's bad for the environment. Did you know the Formula One racing alone puts uh, 256 ton, uh, 100 tons of CO2 in the air every season? You can hear a collective gas from the people gathered around Anton. Only Sam and Sophia seem pleased by your reply. Not only do the cars themselves contribute, but the travel and logistics have an impact too. Actually, I was talking to the chairman about that. The average car only releases about 4.6 tons a year, so the difference is striking. Anton chats about the car a bit more before he moves to the next car in the lineup. This one looks a little uh, like it just drove off the set of a classic movie. This girl is one of my pet projects. Beautiful. It reminds me of uh, a car my grandfather used to own. I'd like to have her modernized, but I'm not sure where to start. Any ideas? <laughs> Convert to electric. There are some really great companies out there putting electric engines into vintage vehicles. And they actually run better than modern cars. I bet it's expensive. Actually, on quite the contrary. Those vintage parts are actually really hard to get a hold of. Versus electric parts are very modern and uh, very easy to get to. Commercially, it's around $10,000 per car, but the benefits last for years, and it sends a good message to consumers about the future of the industry. So $10,000 is really a bargain, then. 
Last, Anton stands in front of a classic muscle car, distinctly American made. This was the first car I bought of my own. It took every penny of my life savings, but I have it. I had to have it. My first ex-wife left me three days later. I own dozens of vehicles now, but this one stay always holds a special place in my heart. I should probably pare down on my collection, but it's uh, hard to say goodbye. What's a man to do? Buy a bigger garage? You're an idiot. Anton chuckles at Robin's joke, but you realize you might be able to make an impression if you offer a real solution. Make sure they're sustainable. If you love cars so much, shouldn't you make sure they fit into a sustainable future? I mean, if we run out of gas, you won't be able to drive anymore. And it's very true. You have the means and the interest to make a real change in the industry. I like the way you think. So do I. That's why I wanted her for the environmental division at Dalton Russo Industries. Anton approaches you and Sophia, and the two of them exchange friendly air kisses. Hello, Anton. So good to see you again. Anton smiles at her and then turns to you. I don't believe I've had the pleasure of making your acquaintance, Miss... Schuller. Anna Schuller. I've been looking forward to meeting you, Mr. Bissett. It's not often I get to meet someone who uh, feels the way that I do about the future of the automotive industry, Anna. Can I call you Anna? You're really that interested in the environment? Absolutely. Several of the vehicles in my personal collection have been outfitted with hydrogen engines and uh, other forward-thinking uh, ecological improvements. That sounds like a star. It's great that you've made the efforts to improve your private collection, but what about racing as a whole? An excellent question. I've been working on an initiative to make the Grand Prix more sustainable. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it sometime. Name the time and place and I'm there. If you love the environment even half as much as I love my cars, then I'm looking forward to it. Anton eyes you up and down. You aren't sure? what he's looking at for until he reaches in his pocket and pulls out a key ring. I admit, I'm intrigued by a passion, Anna. Passion is one of the few things in this world that money can't buy. I have a lot of passion, too, you know. Obviously, most of the passion is for cars, which is why Anton tosses you the keys. I want to give you the chance to find out why they're so important to me. On raises his voice so the rest of the group can hear. Actually, I'm giving everyone free reins of my cars for the afternoon. Consider it a perk of the job. Oh, sweet mother of God, if you crash one of his cars, you're fired. You let's be real. This is too much. No, it's not. I can see where you're coming from on the environment, but I want you to see where I'm coming from on cars. The track is open for the next hour. The streets of Monte Carlo never close. Just promise me you'll bring, bring them back in one piece. Oh, that sweet little red car is all mine. Oh, I can't wait for her to wreck that. One by one, the other executives zoom off until it's only you and Sam left. Samantha, why didn't you speak up? I'm running out of vehicles. Oh, that's okay. I can wait. Nonsense. Why did you go with Anna? I'm sure she'd appreciate having an experienced driver as a passenger. You catch Sam's eye, trying to hide how excited the idea is making him. She steps closer to you, dropping her voice so only you can hear. Will you take me for a joyride, Anna? I promise to make it worth your while. She discreetly runs her fingers down your arm, the husky timbre in her voice, making you shiver. She make all the engines go vroom vroom. Listen, I have no regrets on that pun. You can't make me. Well, if Mr. Bassett insists, then I suppose I don't mind letting Sam tag along. But I'm driving. Lead the way. I've always wanted to do something like this. A few minutes later, you and Sam are zooming through the streets of Monte Carlo. I had no idea you were such a speed demon. I'm not, normally. But... Even I can't resist an engine purring beneath me. You stroke the smooth leather interior and smirk. Don't you agree? 
Very much so. She settles back in her seat, looking relaxed. So where are we headed? You act like she's been to Monte Carlo. <laughs> Let's drive up into the mountains. I want to see the views. Maybe see how this baby handles these hairpin turns. And let's take the road north. You press the accelerator as you turn into the curvy mountain road. The twists and turns take more focus, but the adrenaline is unlike anything you've ever felt before. Oh, I still can't believe Anton Bassett is letting us drive his car. He's certainly a man with many eccentricities. Although, if I'd known easily you would win him over this afternoon, I might have taken more precautions. What? What? Are you losing your bet already? Mm, regretting our little bet? Let's just say I'm starting to wonder what other tricks you're hiding up your sleeves. It's not what's in my sleeves that you should be worried about. She takes in a sharp breath, and not because you took a turn too fast. Oh, and what exactly should I worry about? Well, when I win the bat. If you win. When I win. I'm gonna have so much fun paying you back. Once I have you on your knees, you'll have no choice but to do what I say. And what will you make me do? Hmm, I'll have to feel it out in the moment. One thing's for sure. I won't let you up until I'm very satisfied you've learned your lesson. You sound awfully sure of yourself, but the robotics division might still give you a run for your money. Tell that to Anton. There are other investors besides Anton. She curls her hand around the back of your neck. It's light, possessive gesture that sends a shiver down your spine. Sam. Instead of letting go, she allows her fingers to trail along the side of your throat. Keep your eyes on the road, Anna. She slips her fingers lower with agonizing slowness. She traces the swell of your breasts and then lower your gasp as she cups your curves. She leans in so her lips tease the shell of your ear. Not sure of yourself now, are you? Push the car to the limit. You clear your throat and sit up straighter. You're not able to, about to go down without a fight. Hold on tight. You push the car accelerator all the way to the floor and the world blurs past you. Sam pulls her hand back so she can brace herself against the momentum. Is that as fast as it can go? Let's find out. Yes, and a truck whizzes by in the opposite direction, a little too close for comfort. Whoa. You okay? You nod know, as you bring the car back to a normal speed. Uh, just a little startled. I'm good. She puts a comforting hand on your knee, then inches it higher up your inner thigh. Sam, if you're not careful, I'm gonna crash this car. She strokes your center, uh, even through your clothing. It makes you gasp. Then I'll be very, very careful. She increases the pressure, and you buck her hips into her touch, desperate for more friction. Finally, you take, can't take any more. You pull the car over to the side of the road and turn your face to Sam. Enough teasing. I need you. You grab Sam by the front of her shirt and drag her into the, in for a hard, pun, punishing kiss. She matches your ferocity almost immediately. Your tongue sweeps into your mouth, taking and giving an equal measure. You try to undress, but you bump your elbow into the gear shift. Oh. There's not very much room inside this tiny sports car, is there? Well, then let's, uh, take it to the hood. We'll have more space outside. Come on. You get out of the car, stripping off your clothes. As you go, you hop onto the hood. Sam follows you, settling between your legs as you make room for her. There. That's better. Ah, the things that are allowable and passable in foreign countries. She tugs you around the waist, so you have no choice but to slide into her. The sweet pressure of her hips grinding against your own causes you to moan. Yes, this was an excellent idea. She captures your lips again, and you feel breathless as adrenaline continues to pump through your veins. You like when I kiss you, don't you? Yes, yeah, Sam. I love it. She runs a hand up your side and traces your curves. You gasp as she flicks a thumb over the tight peaks. 
You like it when I touch you like this, don't you? Every moment of your body against her sends a spark of longing through your core. Yes, but I like it more when you touch me here. Grab her hand and bring it to your center. She takes the hint, rocking the heel of her hand against you. I love when you take what you want from me. She slips a finger inside, then another. Yes. Tell me how you want me, and I'm all yours. I want to taste you. Only if I get to taste you, too. It's an offer you can't refuse. After some maneuvering, you both manage to lie back on top of the hood where uh, hips are at your eye level. It's a little tricky, but the thought flies out of your head as soon as she leans in to lick you. Oh my god. Delicious. Not to be outdone, you kiss her center, flicking your tongue against her button. As she arches in your touch, the scent of her is intoxicating. Right there. She shows you what she means on your body, the two of you working together in perfect tandem as you climb towards the peak. The cool breeze against your hot skin reminds you that you're stretched out along the hood of a car on display for anyone who happens to pass by. I'm right there. Me too. You redouble your menstruation and determined to make her uh, go first. But as soon as she uh, starts to spasm against you, you crash over the edge. Sam. After you finally manage to catch your breath. I hope Anton doesn't notice uh, what we did to his car. Just a Mr. Miyagi spit and shine unit. Just wax on, wax off. Sam leans down to kiss you long and deep. You know, I can't bring myself to care. But we should probably get the car back before he suspects we ran away with it. Now there's an idea. She chuckles as the two of you slip back into your clothes and start the drive back, this time with Sam behind the wheel. Did that mean she won, though? The next morning. Seriously, she got to drive. You and Sam accidentally meet up in the hotel lobby and make your way to the event center side by side. Good morning. It's a beautiful day to win a bet, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Why, yes. Yes, it is. I couldn't agree more, especially when the stakes are so high. Sam, uh, may the best team win. You hold your hand out to Sam and she shakes it, holding it just a little too long. As much as I'm looking forward to winning our bet, losing wouldn't be so bad either. Inside the convention center, you and Sam part ways. No matter what happens, it promises to be an interesting day. What the? You stop dead in your tracks as you approach your booth instead of finding everything in order and waiting for you. Your prototype lies in tatters on the floor. Well, that definitely isn't Sam's style, and it's not Sophia's. She wouldn't ruin her own thing. Robin. We've been sabotaged. And that's it. Please make sure to do what's on your screen. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe for even more and become a part of this community. And head down to the description down below where uh, there is a lot of links. You can uh, do things like support the channel. You can also join. There's a button on YouTube where you can hit that join button. And that means you're going to go a step further than just being a subscriber, but a member of this community. And it means that uh, you want to uh, just give back a little for, especially this is my 34th hundredth video that I've uploaded in the span of five years. We have done a lot of content. Let me be real. Markiplier just uploaded his 5,000th video. And he's one of the biggest content creators on the face of the earth. So... Kind of happy to realize that in half of the time, as Mark, I have done um, just shy of 1,600 videos as him. So, yeah. And, uh, by the way, there's right now at least 10 VODs waiting to be uh, sent over and, and for all of you to enjoy this weekend. So prepare for that because of a lot of new content is coming. And also, by the way, if you enjoy choices-type material, there is a game that is up on Twitch that I just covered, as well as there will be a game that I will be covering this weekend that is yet another type of choices-type material, but it's actually by a company that actually cares about your opinions, cares about your choices, and uh, it's really fantastic, so feel free to check that out. Thanks for watching. Peace out.